Okay, so the song kind of started with this bass line here. Um, and I can play that for you here. So that's a uh, that's an F sharp to an A to an E to a B, and the song is in E major. It's kind of like a really basic <laughs> chord progression, but um, I wanted the bass here to sound synthetic, so that's why there's only uh, a MIDI bass playing here in the intro. Um, the real bass comes in a bit later at this chorus, this kind of chorus in the middle of the intro. Um, but I'll play that for you here. And uh, fun fact, this isn't actually a bass because I don't have a bass guitar. Um, so I just recorded the bass line on my regular guitar and then I put a pedal board on with an octave pedal here. So it just kind of mimics the bass sound a little bit. I also ran it through um, a bass amp instead of a normal amp. So this is what that sounds like. And then without the octave pedal, I, it's kind of a subtle distinction on here, but. It adds just a tiny bit of low end. Um, you're gonna hear that a lot. Just kind of, just kind of ignore, <laughs> ignore that. Um, but here I have a left and a right pan of the bass, um, and these are running through some different stuff. So I have some, I have like a reverb from CLA's Echo Sphere here, um, just kind of on this left element. And these are just kind of used as like textural elements, I guess. I wanted to vary a little bit from the, the normal, just having one kind of centered bass line. So this is what the uh, left and right pans sound like. And now I have a uh, two center panned bases, um, both running on different P sets. One of them is reverbed as well. So this is what that sounds like with the center ones. And with all of the bass, The bass, um, it stays relatively consistent throughout the song. Like that's pretty much the bass line of the entire song. <laughs> so uh, it does change in the interlude um, and I only have the MIDI bass playing in the interlude as well. So here's that. But that's the interlude um, bass and that's pretty much the base of the entire song, I guess. Um, so that was kind of easy. Uh, let's start with, uh, let's go on to the guitar then. Um, I have a quite a bit of guitar, but the most noticeable one is this rhythm guitar here. I had, so these top six takes were, I had my friend record guitar on that because I'm not the best guitar player. So, so um, big thanks to him. I'll link him below, but those are his, and let's start with those actually. So. <laughs> So again, I'm doing that, that layering method um, where I have two tracks, two differently recorded tracks of guitar panned left and right, and then one down the center. That just gives it a little bit more realism in my opinion. Um, I just kind of like doing that. But this is what those the right and left sounds like by themselves. And with the center. Yeah, 
that the, that bass bass that guitar always goes um throughout the chorus it doesn't really change there um these are my takes um they're a bit looser I guess. <laughs> So the entire rhythm guitar there would sound like this. So that's the the rhythm guitar. It's a very like rocky kind of powerhouse um, guitar. And so I have a couple of other guitars layered under that, one of which is this arpeggio kind of thing. It's not really an arpeggio, I don't know why I kind of called it that, but this one I had my friend record as well. Here's what that sounds like. <laughs> That's the arpeggio. Um, I put a space designer reverb with a vocal preset because why not, right? I, I don't know. But I put that there just to give it a little bit of reverb. And that goes under the rhythm guitar. So if I play the rhythm guitar along with that. that's what that sounds like um and then i have the same yes yeah the same arpeggio playing in the verse here which i guess isn't very different i don't know why i spaced the tracks out that far scared it's not that different um and then i have this i honestly forgot what this is so <laughs> different arpeggio going under that um, and then with a lot more reverb yeah um, so those two together sound like so that's the arpeggio um, in the choruses the arpeggio is there, but I split it instead of having one one track centered um, like the first chorus here. In this chorus, I split it into two and then did the left and right pan um, with a bit of tape delay. This is just Logic's native tape delay, um, but I put that there and then I put a couple dBs of reverb. So this is what that sounds like. <laughs> That's what that sounds like. Um, and that's it for the arpeggios and the rhythm guitar. Now for the lead guitar. <laughs> this is the fun part. Um, the lead guitar melody started out with a, uh, a MIDI melody that I wrote um, using this contact guitar preset. And this is what that sounds like. <laughs> So I have a, uh, I have a chorus and a um, vibrato right there um, with some reverb here. And that's where that started. But then I, I was like, this needs to be real guitar. So um, again, I had my friend record real guitar on top of that. But then I decided to keep the MIDI ones there. So I this is the left and right pan of the real guitar. <laughs> Yeah. And so there's a there's an octave pedal on there, which is I it's more obvious than the octave pedal on the bass. You can definitely tell. Um, but this is all of that layered. And 
that's pretty much the guitar in the song. Um, this lead guitar just plays the lead throughout the choruses. That's all it does. So there's not much to talk about there. <laughs> um, now for the synths. Okay, so I have two synths here for the chorus. Um, one is a Wurlitzer, and then one is um, just this synth, other synth preset that I found. Um, but this is what they sound like together. So I added that just a little bit of, you know, percussive element uh, in the guitar. It plays the exact same riff that the lead guitar does. So if I combine those two, this is what that sounds like. <laughs> So it does add that percussive element, which is kind of cool. Um, and then it plays a couple of other like teeny little riffs here and there, um, especially during the verses and the pre-chorus where there's not a lot of guitar going on, just to kind of fill that space. So here's what that sounds like. And I'll add um, just the arpeggio guitar. <laughs> pretty much it for those synths um it plays the same thing it just kind of repeats it over the verses choruses and pre-choruses um yeah <laughs> i don't know uh, and then the keys um these are also kind of synths i guess but I, I put them into two different categories um because this resembles this is more of like chords and stuff the synths i used more for textural elements um so i have this piano with a tape delay which I guess is zero wet output. I don't know, that was kind of dumb. Um, but this is what that sounds like. And then I added a uh, distorted Wurlitzer preset with a tremolo on it into the pre-choruses just to give it a little bit of difference from the verses. Yeah, the, the Wurlitzer by itself sounds like this. It also has a bit of tape delay. Um, I like tape delay a lot. <laughs> yeah, I use it pretty much on almost everything. But yeah, that's those are the keys. So the keys and the synths, I can play those together as well here. With the, uh, I guess the arpeggios. here um, they don't play anything for the choruses and it kind of fills the space for the missing guitar in the verses and pre-choruses so they kind of like trade off the guitar goes hand in hand with the keys keys don't play during the chorus guitar does um, and during the interlude um, when there's not a lot of guitar uh, the keys fill in again for that spot so this is what the keys play during the interlude just these kind of broken chords Let's go on to the drums. <laughs> now the drums, um, these two, the drums along with the bass, um, start the song. So this is, I had this little like percussion ensemble thing going on here. It was a MIDI percussion ensemble thing. Just to start setting the beat, I guess. Um, and with the bass, it sounds like this. And I had that um, that counting kind of triangle thing go into the first chorus um, as like a build up lead thing. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, that's where the drums start. And so here I have um, this just solo with the kick and the snare, just kind of a simple beat, not not super complex at all. 
And those toms are only a uh, floor in the high tom for most of it. The mid tom comes in during the interlude, second half of the interlude here. So it's like a reinforcement of the beat, I guess. So that's where that is. And that leads into the second chorus. Yeah, okay. Cool. Here we go. Oh, and this thing, um, it's pretty much just, I, I, I put some different settings on here and that's why I duplicated it into a different track, but um, it's pretty much the same thing as the other ones. It's just a, just that kind of lead into the chorus. Um, so the chorus, the first chorus here with all of those, all of those instruments added together. <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah, that's, I guess that's it for the instrumental. There's really not that much, which kind of, which is kind of surprising. Um, but yeah, okay, so vocal time. So for the vocals, there's a lot of tracks here. Um, I recorded one main vocal just kind of centered along, um, it's just kind of centered uh, on the panning, but um, here's what that sounds like. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. Oh, I don't know if I should be scared. And the, the vocal processing here is Kind of a lot. I, I start with a EQ and I just use a preset for that. Um, but then I added a little bit of distortion just to kind of, I, I don't know, it just kind of adds that um, extra element of, you know, kind of mic fuzz, I guess. And then I added a, quite a bit of reverb. There's a, a space designer reverb there, then some tape delay, and then some more reverb, <laughs> some more reverb with a CLA echo sphere. Then I put a de to um, get rid of some of those weird sounds that come out sometimes. <laughs> and then I have a compressor here along with some more reverb. So the clean vocal sounds a lot different. Let me just take all of those off. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. Now I'm going to start adding those back in. And let me go here. My own two hands have gone away, replaced by problems. Oh, I don't know if I should. So that's the main vocal, and then I have these two left and right panned um, vocals here. So let me play those. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. And that kind of has the, the same vocal processing as the main layer, um, but with a bit more reverb and a bit more delay because the focus for those, I think, is to just kind of be in the background, giving it a little bit more ambience to it. Um, so I have those layered under that. Um, yeah, and then I have this layer of vocals called the wet effects layer. And this is like pretty much like a a lesser tier of the panned vocals. So this one would take the same thing, the same vocal processing as the right and left panned ones, but just increase the wet knob on like everything. <laughs> so the de the delay has like a 75% wet here. Um, CLA, the mix is up to 60%. Space designer, I put it, I, dr I muted the dry signal here. Um, so this is what that sounds like. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. So because of that, all of that wet signal, it's a tiny bit distorted as well. Um, I can't remember if this is... 
Oh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so because I, the tape delay dry signal is zero, um, this is actually like a full eighth note behind the beat. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. So as I increase that dry knob, it, um, it gets back on tempo, but that that's kind of the focus of that track is to provide some sort of like echo, kind of that that washy kind of effect to the vocals. So this is that one with the right oh, left. I don't know if I be and then with the main. Oh, I don't know if I should be afraid. So that's that. Um, and then on top of everything, just as a kind of glue thing, I put a two VQ on there. Um, with an enhanced mix preset, I guess it just kind of makes it sound a little bit crisper. But that's pretty much it. Um, oh, this pre-chorus boosted track, it's there's nothing special on it. It just has um, a little bit of gain because when I recorded these, not all of them, like I guess I was too distanced from the mic on some of them, so it didn't sound as loud, but I, I fixed that by just putting a gain on here and boosting the level a little bit um so that's the those are just the main vocals here and so for the chorus vocals it just does this hey oh pattern thing um so this is what that sounds like hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh, oh. and I, I wanted it to sound kind of like i was yelling but i wasn't because you know i'm in this is just my bedroom in a in a it's very relatively small house so i didn't want to yell um but i have these two main ones as the kind of louder ones. Hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh. So those have a, um, if I recall correctly, oh, they don't. I turned off. Oh, never mind. Yeah. So this one has a, uh, a whammy pedal on there. So if I play that without the. Hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh. So it kind of adds like a vocal doubler kind of feeling to it and it also adds a higher pitched um of the same thing and then this spring box here is a reverb so if I hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh. it's a very subtle reverb um but that's what that is and the rest of this i believe is pretty much is very similar to the main vocal processing this one has a little bit less reverb um yeah, a different EQ. But those are the chest vocals here. And then these two vocals. Hey -oh, hey -oh. These two vocals, I uh, um, got closer to the mic and then I did like a faint whispery kind of thing and then I boosted those. Hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh. But yeah, same pedal board on there. Kind of funny that I ran a pedal board through vocals, but whatever. <laughs> and um, that those sit in the back, um, kind of mixed with these two. So all four of those together sound like this. Hey -oh, hey -oh, hey -oh, oh. And I did the same thing um, for these chorus vocals that I did for the other ones where I had a wet effects layer. And again, the dry signal is muted. CLA turned up to 60 and uh, tape delay, I believe, is also muted. Yep. So, and on the the entire kind of group of those vocals, I have an echo that just, um, I don't know, it echoes. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty self-explanatory, yeah. Um, uh, let me see what these are. I'm kind of curious now. <laughs> right. So okay. So I needed a transition between the regular sounding vocals and then these weird heyos. So I just added the heyo effects um, onto a set of normal recorded vocals. So I only recorded three tracks for the normally recorded ones. Um, but, and then I took, I took the main out, so there's no main vocals here, and it's just the left and right ones, and then a wet effects reverb layer on those, and then I copied those, the, the left and right panned ones, and then I put them 
in here as well. So this is what that sounds like. If I just loop that. I can't take it anymore. It's kind of a bit distorted, but um, along with the the Heyo layered ones here. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. So that's the transition vocals. Um, let's see. Oh, nope. I think this is all the same. Yeah, same vocal processing. But I think that's it for the vocals. Oh, and before I forget, I almost forgot. There's, um, let me explain these trumpet and the strings. So I added this trumpet thing, but, um, it's not really a trumpet, it's a synth key trumpet preset thing, with, and I added um, a couple of stuff. So I did kind of the same thing as the vocals with these, where I added a left and right panned layers, and then this one's just a little bit panned to the left, but um, it acts as a main layer anyways. So this is what that sounds like. So this goes under the vocals, it kind of mimics the vocal melody in the pre-chorus, and it only plays during the pre-chorus. So this is this um, with the two layers, and the, the left and right ones um, have this plugin called Valhalla Supermassive, it's a free reverb plugin, and it's really good for like making these really big space echoey kind of reverbs. And so that's what I did on the left and right ones here, but they mimic the vocal melody, so I'll play those with the vocals. My own two hands have gone away, replaced by problems. So that's what that sounds like, and that those trumpets only play during the pre-choruses, um, so not a lot of action there. But then the strings come in during pre-chorus two, because I didn't want pre-chorus two to sound like just the same thing as pre-chorus one. Um, so I added these strings just to kind of make it a little bit different. So I have some studio cellos. These are just a preset from Logic um, with Valhalla on them. So this is what that sounds like. And it's just this uh, rotating arpeggio-like thing. I don't know. Um, and then I have this set of strings playing chord swells and these surprisingly have zero audio effects on them i don't know if i forgot to put those on there i have no clue but um this is from a plugin called labs and it has a ton of just instruments like midi instruments that you can use and they're really well sampled i really like the strings from this um it's also very it's not expensive at all. I don't know why I said very. It's free, so um, definitely recommend checking that out. But uh, this is what that sounds like. And with the cellos. So yeah. Um, so everything in the pre-chorus, instrumentally, sounds like this. the song <laughs> um yeah that's all i have to say never mind i before i forget before i forget um i have a there's a reason why the stereo out is shown on um on this window here and it's because at the end i added a bit crusher which slowly gets um turned up 
towards the end of the song and just kind of makes it end very abruptly. So, but there you go. I promise. That's the end. That's the end of the song. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, bye bye.